<clears throat> Thank you for watching. There are some Christians out there who are very eager to denounce the Book of Mormon. But, in an ironic twist of things, the Book of Mormon is much more clear about certain principles and doctrines than the Bible is. <clears throat> and here are some of those things. The divinity of Jesus Christ. The Bible gets at it. Um, the most clear part in the Bible where we learn about Jesus Christ's divinity is when um, the Jews are about to stone him, one of the many times, and he says, before Abraham was, I am. I am is the same wording used by God in the book of Exodus when Moses asks something like, uh, who shall I tell them sent me? Because Moses was worried that they would not believe him and would not want to follow him. The Lord's response is, I am. <clears throat> tell them that I am has sent you. <clears throat> now, but, I don't know how many Bible versions translate that differently, those two parts. I'm sure the Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible has those two parts translated differently. I ended up spending like an hour in a Jehovah's Witness neighbor's house one time. And that hour started off with me trying to understand how Jehovah's Witnesses don't understand this one Christian doctrine when the Bible's clear on it. And I found out at the start of this hour conversation that that covered more than just that topic or gos um, topic of the gospel, or a topic of you know more than that one issue, that their Bible uses different wording in each of those sections of the Bible. But in the Book of Mormon, um, the brother of Jared sees God, and God explains to the brother of Jared. You are seeing what my body is going to look like when I come among the children of men, when I am born. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the Book of Mormon, I'll put the reference in the description, comes right out and says um, that the God himself atoneth for the sins of his people. There's nowhere in the Bible that's comes out that clearly and says, God himself atoneth for the sins of his people. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> can only one sin keep us out of heaven? Uh, any Christian should say, well, of course, one sin will keep us out. But the Bible doesn't explain that principle as clearly as the Book of Mormon does how one sin makes us spiritually unclean and no unclean thing can dwell with God. The Book of Mormon is much more clear about that issue than the Bible. <clears throat> um, at least one Christian who's got videos on the internet that I've watched has um, answered the question of, you know, uh, wouldn't why doesn't God just have everyone come live with him? Why is there a hell? Um, the Book of Mormon much more clearly answers this question in the Bible. And in one instance, Frank Turek, who I'm not saying is right about everything, but in this one instance, he said practically what the Book of Mormon says, that you would be more miserable with a just and holy God after a lifetime of ignoring him and living against the way he says than you would be in hell, or at least kept away from God. <clears throat> and the law of Moses is symbolic of Jesus Christ. The law of Moses is supposed to be letting us know that Jesus Christ will come and sacrifice himself for us. That is made much more clear in the Book of Mormon than it is in the Bible. <sighs> slavery is bad. Now, many anti-slavery activists have been inspired by the Bible. And I'm not saying that the Bible is pro-slavery, 
But the Book of Mormon is much more clearly an anti-slavery book than the Bible is. There's probably some idiot yelling at his computer right now, No, no, but there were slaves! The Law of Moses has slaves! <clears throat> some of the parts in the Bible where it mentions slavery, it's dealing with something that's already existing and telling people how they should act within that system, not endorsing that system but just telling people how they should act within that system. <clears throat> um, and the slavery that is in the books of Moses that God taught the children of Israel has some very important and stark differences that, between it and the slavery of America 1800. Um, some differences. You could not beat your slave under the law of Moses. Your slave was freed after seven years. As all the slaves were freed every jubilee year, which was 50 years. <clears throat> and the slave chose to sell himself into slavery. See, it was more like an employer-employee relationship. Or a servant, but not slavery, whereas in the old um, America 200 years ago, a slave could be beat by the owner, no problem. Law of Moses, owner beats a slave, he's in trouble, might lose a slave. And in the Law of Moses, those slaves got to leave. There was no hunting down of a slave allowed. So these were people staying there under their own free will. Whereas, and 200 years ago in America, slaves were hunted down and forced back. That's some big differences. Thank you for watching. You have a good day.